the stairs of the State House, surrounded by Palestinian flags, along with all of my comrades here today. <laughs> Who is human to you, America? We have a problem. Very few people claim to be okay with genocide, yet the genocide has been allowed to continue on our dime for almost a year now. How do we reconcile those facts? Aside from the people of principle who stand before me today on their time off, my brave friends with whom I have been honored to fight Western imperialism since October, aside from these outspoken few, do most Americans actually support ethnic cleansing? It has become overwhelmingly clear that the right to life is not a Western value, but it's also true that people have a tendency to empathize with those they identify with. So I ask again, who is human to you, America? I won't even hit you with terms like racism and Islamophobia, because I know how easy it is to dehumanize an entire population in order to protect one's worldview. Even still, I would have thought that past all of the brainwashing, at the very least children would have made the cut. At the very least, hospitals should not be touched. At the very least, torture is a line that can't be crossed, no matter how righteous the cause, no matter how much one might identify with the war criminals in question. Doesn't justice transcend identity? Or is the tribalism so strong within us that we can't care about a people until we know them personally? We can introduce you, America, to the humans you find disposable, whose existence inconveniences you, with reminders that this is not and has never been a righteous nation. Have you met the baby who was pulled from the rubble with missing limbs, who sleeps while unaware that her entire family has been killed by the latest Israeli airstrike on a hospital in a supposed safe zone? Do you know the young man who smiles through dehydration, starvation, and disease because he has managed to rewire a fan to produce a mild breeze in a scorching refugee camp? How about the woman who is older than Israel the one who tends a garden near the school because the constant destruction around her for her entire life has not been enough and will never be enough to break her spirit to nurture and fight for her people. These are the people of Palestine. Whoever you are and wherever you are from, they are your family. And they are being massacred every single day while we live in comfort. Sometimes I feel like I shouldn't sleep because I know when I wake up, I'll wake up to a new list of war crimes. The Zionist colonizers slaughter the people of Palestine faster than the news can reach us and our tears can fall. Palestine, we are not free, as long as we live in a, loud, in a world that allows for your suffering. But Palestine, you have taught us that freedom is possible. You have shown us how to fight. You have reminded us what to fight for and that we can't despair because you are not despairing. Palestine, we watch from afar feeling helpless but not heartless. We are still and always watching and shouting and marching and making life very uncomfortable for Zionists. Palestine, we won't allow anyone on this side of the ocean to enjoy their illusion of freedom. Not until you claim yours, Palestine. Most of us will never see you with our own eyes, but your name has become synonymous with freedom as we have risen around the world for your liberation. Like no single fight has ever been able to unite the human race before. 